What's up guys, Eric here, Mr. Fired Up Wealth. They call her the queen of stonks, Nancy Pelosi, and really her husband, Paul. Are they some of the best investors of all time or is it something more than that? This video is not meant to be political whatsoever. It's facts. I'm bringing you facts and it's really about money. This has been going on for a long time. Democrats, independents, Republicans, they all do it. So you think of the House, you think of Congress, they're all making buys and sells in the stock market. A lot of people don't think that that should happen. Well, it does happen. I'm going to show you a few things in this video. I'm going to give you a little bit of a background, a little history behind it. I'm going to tell you some thoughts behind it. And I'm going to show you my favorite, my, my favorite five really. So top five stocks that Nancy Pelosi and her husband own. And it's actually interesting because I own these five stocks as well, and you might own them as well. But this is going to be a fun video. It's going to paint the picture of what's going on. You've seen influencers like on TikTok that literally are, are making channels. And there's a Twitter channel, a couple Twitter channels that literally just follow Nancy Pelosi's trades. And they're calling her one of the best investors of all time. It's hard to deny the performance over the last couple of years since the pandemic. There's been some really interesting moves. I'm going to show you a few things in this video though, and I'm actually going to give you a couple of websites where you can actually go and not only look at Nancy Pelosi's buys and sells, but everybody in the House of Representatives as well as Senate. You can literally see all the buys and sells. There's a website. There's a website for each, and I'll actually share those with you. The links are actually below in the video as well. You're going to want to see this video, guys. Stay tuned. All right, guys, check out this article. This just came out actually a couple days, October 20th. So Investopedia, TikTokers track lawmakers' personal stock trades. And listen to this, 67%, 67% of Americans believe lawmakers should not own stocks. So why do they? Well, because they make the laws. <laughs> According to Pew Research data, public trust in politicians sits near historic lows. Currently, just 24% of Americans trust the government. 24%, down substantially from 75% back in the mid-60s. Think about that for a second. Just think about that. 24% versus 75% in the 60s. That, that's amazing. That number boggles my mind. Maybe that's precisely why today's new breed of cynical social media traders are tracking Congress members trading activity as part of their investment strategy. Now, I'm not advising this whatsoever. This video is mostly for entertainment purposes, but there's actually five stocks that Nancy Pelosi and Paul Pelosi own that I actually own that I really like. So it's kind of a cool video. And it, I think it's, it's giving you some information that you might not know about. And I think it's important that we are aware of what's going on, right? So lawmakers, listen to this, passed the Stop Trading on Congressional Knowledge Stock Act in 2012 to discourage insider trading. So they made a law in 2012 when President Obama was in office. They made a law to basically help discourage insider trading. So the question is, well, what happened before 2012? So another article here from NPR. Listen to this quote. As I understand it, one of the perks of being a member of Congress, especially from the late 1800s on, was to be able to trade on inf insider information. So literally people would want to be in Congress so that they could legally do insider Insider trading. It was a perk of being in Congress. It needs to come to an end. I, I agree with that. So why are they still even able to trade? They say that they're not using insider information, but do we know that as the public? Listen to this. This is actually an old article. It's from April 16th, 2013. And the law actually happened in 2012. How Congress quietly overhauled its insider trading law. Here you can see Vice President at the time was uh, Biden, who's now president, of course. Barack Obama signing this, this deal. This was back in 2012, April 4th, 2012. He signs the Stock Act, okay, to basically stop insider trading or, or try to prevent it. All this really did was actually make the, the transactions more transparent. So going back to this article, trades executed by lawmakers or their families must be disclosed within 45 days of execution. This really came from that 2012 law. So does that law really stop insider trading? Not really. I'm not accusing anybody of insider trading, but all it's doing is making the records more transparent. Let me show you what that record keeping looked like before this law was passed. Records in the basement. To understand how the law changed, I asked Holman to meet me in the basement of the Cannon House office building. So you have to literally go and travel back then to Washington, D.C. This is where all the public records were kept. That's right. If you want to look up the financial disclosure forms filed by high-level congressional staffers to find out whether they've been using the privileges of their positions to make well-timed stock trades, you have to come to this office. And then Holman showed me how it works. You have to enter your name and address into a computer, and then you can do a 
search, but you have to know the name of the person that you're actually searching for. If he or she has filed a financial disclosure form, it will come up as a PDF and you can print it for 10 cents a page. The database itself is almost meaningless, says Holman. He says the only option for those who want to get a comprehensive look at some 2,900 staffers and what they've filed is to review each case one by one. And that's too big of a job for anybody to do. The Stock Act was supposed to make this task significantly easier. Records for members of Congress, the executive branch, and their staffs were supposed to post online searchable sortable. And it is. And I'm actually going to show you the websites where you can search that data. So this is another fairly recent article. TikTokers are trading stocks by copying what members of Congress do. Will alert Nancy Pelosi just bought $11 million in four stocks. So this one here, guys, Marker Rebellion. John and Pete Najarian, you see on CNBC, I follow these guys on Twitter. U.S. is nearing an agreement to purchase a supercomputer made with AMD and N NVIDIA chips. And it's interesting because Nancy Pelosi, her husband, bought NVIDIA stock right before that happened. So there's a lot of heads being scratched. And there was even calls bought as well. Among a certain community of individual investors on TikTok, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's stock trading disclosures are a treasure trove. Shouts out to Nancy Pelosi, the stock market's biggest whale, said user CEO Watchlist. Another said, I've come to the conclusion that Nancy Pelosi is a psychic, while adding that she is the queen of investing. I've heard some people call her the queen of stonks. These are all quotes. I'm reading this article. She knew, declared Chris Josephs, analyzing a particular trade in Pelosi's financial disclosures. And you would have known if you followed her portfolio. Last year, Josephs noticed the trades actually made by Pelosi's investor husband and merely disclosed by the speaker. So what it's saying is Nancy Pelosi has to disclose it. And all the disclosures show SP for spouse. So Paul Pelosi is the one buying it. He's actually an investor. But some people would say, well, is it... Is it really hard to believe that they wouldn't share that information or that she wouldn't talk to her husband about those investments? Like this go buy millions of dollars of stocks without having a conversation? It, it's definitely an interesting uh, topic of discussion. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Let's, let's have a conversation about this. Do you think this is something that we should allow or should we ban you know, people that are making laws from doing trading, especially with indiv individual stocks? The Fed just actually made an announcement just in the last couple of days, and I'll show you that next. This is literally yesterday. Fed officials will be banned from owning individual stocks, Jerome Powell says, and new guidelines. So listen to this. By Jeff Cox, CNBC, October 21st. Responding to a growing controversy over investing practices, the Federal Reserve on Thursday announced a ban on officials owning individual stocks and limits on other activities as well. Fed officials can no longer have holdings and shares of particular companies, nor can they invest in individual bonds, hold agency securities, or derivative contracts. The new rules replace existing regulations that, while somewhat restrictive, still allowed members to buy and sell stocks. This is a quote from Fed Chair Jerome Powell. In quotes, these tough new rules raise the bar high in order to assure the public we serve that all of our senior officials maintain a single-minded focus on the public mission of the Federal Reserve. Under the new rules, the officials will have to provide 45 days of notice in advance of buying or selling any securities that are still allowed. They also will be required to hold the securities for at least a year, so they can't really do active trades off of insider information very easily. They're not going to be able to buy or sell during those periods. Now, another article that I read said that they could buy basically things like mutual funds. It didn't specifically say ETFs, but I assume ETFs are fine. So they can't buy individual stocks. They'd have to buy something like a mutual fund that has a basket of stock holdings. They also cannot buy or sell funds during heightened financial market stress. So basically, if there's a big collapse, like a 20% sell-off like we had during the pandemic. So if the Federal Reserve can do this, why not the House and why not Senate? Okay, I'm gonna share these websites with you. I hope that, uh, you know, if you don't hear from me again, you know why. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, but okay, so this one is the house, okay? So this is housestockwatcher.com, housestockwatcher.com, and you can go through and see everybody that's in the house. You can see if they're Republican or Democrat or independent, what have you, and here is Nancy Pelosi. So you can click on view summary and go in and see what she owns. We're gonna do that later. I'm gonna show you like my top five that I like from her basket, but I also wanna show you the other one first. So this one is senatestockwatcher.com. So there's housestockwatcher.com and senatestockwatcher.com. Same thing here. You can go summary by se senator. You can do by ticker. So you can look at a specific ticker that you want to search, which I think is pretty cool. It also shows you the most recent filings. You can see all the stock tickers right here on your screen. Uh, who bought them, how much they are. You click on view. It'll actually show you a report of exactly what happened on the transaction. So I clicked on this summary by senator. It pulls up all the senators. 
you can go into view summary like this. My screen's gonna go away my camera, but just bear with me for a second. So I'm clicking view summary, boom. Here's a summary for this random person I picked. It shows you all their buys and sells. And you can go into like this one here, you can just go into view. It's gonna open this up, view disclosure form, and you can click on that and voila. Let's go look at Nancy Pelosi. Okay, so here's Nancy. I'm gonna click view summary. It's gonna take me to this screen. Now this is gonna show you all the different moves she's made. It's gonna show you the dates, the details. And you can see top 10 uh, traded ticker by volume. You can see all the different tickers. Now some of these are calls where she's already made the money and, and moved on. Some of them she still owns. So I'm gonna pull this up. I'm actually gonna to go to the first one. This is the first pick. So there's gonna be five stock picks that I'm gonna give you. Number five here, Roblox. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here. You can see amount, 500 thousand to a million dollars. I'm going to click view on the details. It's going to give me a pop-up. This was executed on March 10th. Okay. Roblox purchased 10,000 shares. Let's click on this. Okay. This is the filing number over here. It shows you all the information. There's some other stocks we're not as interested in. We're going to look at Roblox. Okay. So March 10th, if you remember guys, this was the IPO date. So her and her husband bought on the IPO date of March 10th, they bought between 500,000 and a million dollars. And you can see it's 10,000 shares. So we don't know the exact price, but you could do the math 10,000 shares by whatever the open price was. So that's, that's the first one. She still owns because there hasn't been a disclosure, at least as far as we know. So they have to disclose within 45 days. So it's possible she sold Roblox, but we don't have any at this point in time on today's date, which is October 22nd, 2021. She has not sold Roblox, at least that we have information of. So Roblox, Nancy's holding 10,000 shares. Hope you guys are having fun with this one, guys. The number four stock, all right? Number four Nancy Pelosi stocks is PayPal. Now, if you look at this, there's actually a couple of different transactions. So back here, 624, purchased 50 call options with a strike price of $100, expiration of 121. And then PayPal, so 5,000 shares purchased on 612. So between another half million and a million dollars, 5,000 shares of PayPal. That's my number four pick on the Nancy Pelosi stock tracker. So number three, guys, is going to be Microsoft. Now, she doesn't actually own Microsoft anymore, but I want to show you this, this move here because it was pretty incredible. So exercise 150 call options. That's 15,000 shares expiring 319 strike price $130. And then another one here on 319 exercised 100 call options, 10,000 more shares with another strike price of $140. So doesn't look like she owns shares long from what I can see. It looks like they were just um, kind of trades, I guess, options trades. But definitely Microsoft is a top stock in my portfolio. And I'm putting that one at number three on the Nancy Pelosi stock tracker. Number two, CrowdStrike. You know what it is. CrowdStrike. Check this out, guys. So CrowdStrike purchased 5,000 shares. And as far as we know, they still own these 5,000 shares. CrowdStrike coming in at number two, part of the four horsemen. You gotta love it. Nancy Pelosi, a crowd strike shareholder. Now, number one is definitely a favorite and I've done really well on this stock. I've owned it long for a while and I'm up several hundred percent. Number one, which I have 283.349 shares of at $39.55 a share. I've owned long, I'm up 470%. Number one is Nvidia. And you wait till you see the moves that Nancy and Paul did on Nvidia stock. Here we are, number one, guys. Okay, you can see some other moves in here, some other big companies, right? Big tech. Now, what's interesting, if you don't know Nancy Pelosi, she's also from California, right? So San Francisco, kind of Bay Area representing there. So seeing Silicon Valley investments is kind of interesting to me. You can make your own assessment. Again, let's have a conversation, drop a comment. You know, what do you think about this? Nvidia. 6.3, okay, so $1 million to $5 million on this one, okay. Purchase 50 call options with a strike price of $400 and an expiration date of 6.17.2022. But there's actually even a lot more if you start digging under the hood. So here's another one, 7.23, another $500,000 to $1 million, no big deal. 5,000 shares, new purchase, Ooh, interesting. Okay, now we also have 50 call options with a strike price of $100, expiration 9.16. And yeah, so there's several several different ones for Nvidia. And it's interesting if you look at the timing of that and kind of the, the price moves, if you really want to go look at these dates when they were bought and look at the returns, it's pretty significant. Okay, this is an article. I'm gonna share some of this from Investor Place. I must admit, I find myself dis
disagreeing with House Speaker, blah, blah, blah. However, if there was ever a you go lady moment stated among her close colleagues, of course, for the longtime congressional representative, it's her insistence on staying abreast on all market influencing news. Well written there, right? How else can you explain her consistent bullishness on semiconductor producer and all around tech giant NVIDIA? This has to be number one because she's made the most moves on it. In July of this year, Pelosi made two major transactions on NVIDIA stock. We just looked at them, right? First, going long the equity unit, so buying the shares long, and second, buying the call options. In the prior month as well, she purchased shares amounting between one and $5 million. We just showed that to you. But anyways, NVIDIA number one on the top five, Nancy Nancy Pelosi stock picks. Don't go quite yet. A couple things I want to cover, guys. Important stuff. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe. Click that little bell to get notifications. That way, as soon as a new video comes out, boom, you're going to get notified and you won't miss a video. I have people that have followed me for over two years that literally ask me, do you have a video on this stock? And it's like, yeah, dude, I just did a video like a month ago on it. You know, make sure you got notifications turned on. Also, if you want to help me out, you know, I do these videos to try to help you in the community. If you want to return the favor to me, hit that like button and drop me a comment. If you want to take your game to the next level, you can check out our Discord community through Patreon. So Fired Up Wealth Patreon. You can also check out The Motley Fool. I have a special offer. Now, all those links are below in the description. So you're going to get the links for the Patreon community, the link for The Motley Fool offer, as well as those two different links I shared earlier. So you can go look at all the uh, House of Representatives and Senate members and see what they're buying and selling. I don't recommend that you make buys or sells because someone else did. This is really for entertainment purposes. It's not something the channel generally does, but it is something that's been very apparent. Um, some of the moves have been very apparent. And I think that bringing the information to the public is important just so you understand what's going on. Because, you know, you might be a U.S. citizen and have the ability to vote and you need to make the decision. Do you want these lawmakers having the ability to trade individual stocks? I think it's great what the Fed is doing where they're, they're making it very difficult for those officials. I just don't understand why we don't do that across the board in the House and the Senate. It has nothing to do with your political party. It's everyone, independent, Republican, Democrat, all of them. If they're making laws and they're running the country, should they be buying and, and selling individual stocks that they might have information that others might not have? I'm not accusing anybody of anything. It's just simply facts. So tell me what you think. You know, I want you to drop some comments below. Let's have an intelligent adult conversation. Let's not make it political. Let me know what you think about it. And also follow me on Twitter. Check out the other platforms as well. I appreciate your time and attention. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care.